All right, so today we're gonna patch holes from things that we removed from the bus. So this used to be the city water inlet and this used to be the water heater going into the kitchen. We've got some other places on the bus where we also removed some things like the old furnace. Um, the original bus AC has these vents coming in from the side and we need to just cover up all of these holes in the side of the bus. First, just to make it look nicer, but also to seal up and waterproof uh, the sides of the bus. So our first step is gonna be removing all of the old sealant and scraping away um, some of the paint. And so we're gonna use some paint strippers, some denatured alcohol, and just razors and scrapers to get away at this. And that's our first step. All right, so we finished step one. We cleaned up the area. We tried to get it down as close to the bare metal um, all around the edges as we could so that we could have a nice flat surface and um, so that we have the best seal possible. So we used a razor blade, we used scraper, we used um, some paint stripper, and then we cleaned it all up with denatured alcohol. Uh, we also had to grind down the original holes that were here because they were really burred. So we ground those down and now we are ready to start the next step. So both of these surfaces are ready. Um, so we are going to go get our uh, rivet holes drilled into our piece of aluminum and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so next step in the patching is we are going to cut kind of half circles or rounded edges in the metal just to kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So we'll be using a jigsaw and then finishing it with just a bench grinder. So we've already cleaned up the area and we've gotten it pretty much ready to go. And so we'll cut the metal and then we'll drill holes in the metal and then uh, we'll attach it. We're going to take a, a center punch and we're going to just mark out each hole so when we go to the drill press and put the drill down, it kind of acts as a guide that puts it right in the right place. So again, we just put it right at the crosshairs. We've marked these all out and just knock it. So it doesn't have to be super hard, it just has to make a dent. and then along the back it makes little dents and then when you go to drill the drill bit just falls right in that little dent and makes a nice perfect hole So next we're going to drill. So we got our drill bit set up with the five
All right, that easy. So we're gonna use a countersink bit now. I've put a countersink bit on there to deburr or kind of get these rough edges off of the uh, of the back. Okay, take the rough edge off. Oops. Now we're gonna kind of put the plate in place and we're gonna drill some holes. So I'm trying to position it to where we don't have any light in any of these holes. Okay, so I'll get on this basin. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm okay. gonna drill some holes. Normally you have little Clecos to install into these holes. Um, we're just using the rivets to sort of hold it in place. So we'll do that all the way around. And then once we're sure that it fits, we'll put sealant on the back, and then we'll uh, we'll drive them through. All right, they're all drilled out, and they're all set in. So now we'll get ready to put some sealant in, and uh, do the next step. Okay, so our next step is going to be to put on some um, sealant. It's a polyurethane Trump Pro 635 that we got online through Vintage Trailer Supply. Um, we read some different things in forums about whether or not you should use sealant or not. Some people said absolutely. Some people said, well, if you're riveting at the proper spacing, then you shouldn't need it. We're doing it because we just need to be sure that this bus is watertight. So we're going to go ahead and put a couple little beads on here. Um, and hopefully this will make a really good bond in addition to the rivets. And we'll have a nice watertight seal on our patch. So we kind of did one bead on the inside of the rivet holes and one bead just on the outside of the rivet holes. Hopefully that should be good. And we're gonna go ahead and put that on and set the rivets and then we made sure to mark which side was the top and which side was the bottom. Alright, so next we're gonna set the rivets. So we're using this kind of gun, it's a, just a, like a pneumatic hammer gun, it's a rivet gun. Um, and at first we were operating it with the pressure a little too high. So it says between 40 and 45 PSI, they're not kidding. <laughs> so um, we were setting it too high. And so what we do is there's someone on the other side holding a, a big bar, a bucking bar, which is just a big, just uh, metal, almost like an anvil looking. And they'll hold it against the back of the rivet. And then what happens is this is going to hammer and it's going to distort the back so that it pinches the two pieces of metal together. You ready, Don? How's that look? That's good. It's good. Yeah, that was messed up, Dad. Okay, just push the bar against it. Ready? Okay. Yep, ready?
Yep. Yep. It's good. Ready? Yep. It's good. So Dominic is our bucking bar guy today. So you can see how the back of it Come is on. smashed. And that's what pinches it in. Do hold yeah. on one second. Dom, show them, the, show them what the bucking bar looks like. So that is the bucking bar and it has a couple different, uh, has like a skinny part and then, so if you need to like go around a corner, you can do that or if you have a weird place you need to get to, has some different shapes. All right. All right, done. Yep. Good. All right, so we finished driving all of the rivets. So they've all been driven flat. The backside's all been smashed. So now this aluminum plate has a bunch of sealant inside, and so it should be it should be watertight now. Yesterday we did this one, and this one was much more challenging because here we have there's a bunch of ridges and gaps and things like that. So we put a, a bunch of extra sealant in here and just kind of closed it all together. And there's a bunch of sealant that kind of got on the inside and stuff. So it should all be watertight. We'll test it in about a week or so. We'll kind of spray it all with water and then check the inside to make sure they're tight. But they should be watertight. Um, so that's how that's how we did these. Um, we've got a couple more to go. 